Hi, my name is Sascha Dittmann and in this short video I would like to show you how to set up the time machine in macOS to be able to store the backups in Microsoft Azure. To be able to do that, first of all, you need a storage account. For that you click on the plus sign, go to storage and select storage account, blob file and the file service is the one we are going to use, table and queues. In this plate, you have to give the service a name, like for example, time machine backup, select resource manager and general purpose account. The other option would be blob storage, which doesn't contain the file service which we are going to use. Standard is fine and for the replication mechanism, local redundant storage is good. So there will be three copies in the region you selected. Or if you want to have it more secure, you can select G redundant storage, which are three additional copies in a secondary region. You can choose if you want to encrypt those files and enable to be more secure that only HTTPS would be allowed. I leave both disabled and that storage account needs to be part of a resource group so I create a new one. Time machine demo for example and choose a region West Europe is fine for me. And then I click create. That takes a little bit, probably a minute. I'll pause the video for a second. I'm going to continue after that. So the storage account has been created now and I opened already the plate to be able to make changes on that storage account. So the only thing we need for uh, to be able to store our time machine backups to the cloud is a file share. So I click on files add a new file share and give it a name, for example, backups. If I want, I can choose to select a maximum quota, but uh, I will leave it empty to be able to use as much as space as I can. And then we are more or less ready to go. To be able to mount that file share now to uh, macOS, I want to make it easy and I want to type that whole thing. So I'll copy that file service endpoint. Switch to the finder and go to the menu on go, connect to server, or I can use Apple key K and paste that in there. So I need to do two small changes. First of all, the protocol shouldn't be HTTPS. I want to use an SMB share. And I didn't specify which share to use, so that would be backups. And click connect. So macOS is now trying to connect to that file share and should pop up with a question you're attempting to connect to that server. Yeah, connect is fine. And now it's asking me for the credentials. These credentials are or shown in the access key menu. So I click on access keys, copy the username, paste it in there and copy either the first or the second key, doesn't matter which one. So I copy the first key, uh, no, not the whole connection string, just the key, paste it in there. And since I don't want to type that in every time, I click on remember this password in my keychain and click connect. I'm connected to my file share now, but since I'm not able to use time machine backups on a non Apple file system, I need to create a, something called a sparse bundle. To be able to do that, I move to the terminal window And in that terminal window, I select the mounting point of my file share, which is 
volumes and backups so the name of my file share as soon as I'm in there I'll check so that file share is currently pretty empty and the next thing I want to do is use that hard drive utility command to create a sparse bundle so I use util create and specify a size of that sparse bundle so more as a a maximum size of one terabyte in my case. I've chosen a one terabyte drive because I want to back up a 512 gigabyte drive and uh, the minimum of that should be at least twice the size, so one terabyte is fine. Type, as I mentioned, a sparse bundle. The file system is the macOS extended file system plus journal functionality and the volume, I'll give it a name of Azure Time Capsule and the name of the file is as well Azure Time Capsule dot sparse bundle. I've got two options. Either I'm I'm creating that sparse bundle directly within that file share. That might depend on the bandwidth of your internet connection. Might take some time. Um, it's not creating a full terabyte, but some partial of it. I think run about one gigabyte now, and that might take some time over the internet connection. Uh, a different option because uh, that might lead into some timeouts is that you create that sparse bundle locally and use the move command to move it from your local drive to the f file share um, afterwards. So once again I'll pause that video for a second and come back as soon as this is done. And we are back. So the sparse bundle has been created and the next thing I need to do is first of all check if it's there. So that looks good. And now before I type that in I want to show you one thing. If I go back to the Azure portal, click on files, go to my folder, you can see that the sparse bundle has been created as well as some hidden files out of the macOS system. So back to the terminal. And what I was about to say is that the next command is to mount that sparse bundle to the system. For that, again, I want to use the HDI utility with the command attach. The mount point is where I want to mount that. The second parameter, or yeah, the next parameter in the end, is the path to that file. Um, another option, instead of using that tool, is I can go to the finder and double click just that sparse bundle file or package and then the operation system would all, will also mount that sparse bundle to the system. Here we go. So I can move to the to that folder there's a time capsule once again an empty file share. So last but not least would be telling the time machine to use that volume to store its backups. And for that, I need to use that command with elevated writes. So sudo time machine utility set destination minus a means that I want to add that to the existing set of disks. If I get rid of the minus a, it will completely overwrite all the existing backup uh, devices and just use the new one and so that you are able to see that currently it's not in there. Now just my time capsule, my external drive and nothing else. I execute that command then of course it's asking me to type in my password and here we go my one terabyte time capsule backup waiting to complete the first backup. One comment about that of course especially if you are have a full drive and in my case it would be the complete 512 gigabytes and if I would do my first backup that of course might take some time depending on the bandwidth of your internet connection so be aware of that and yeah have fun using Microsoft Azure as a destination for your time machine.